let's talk about health. What's better for you, sleeping well or eating well? Hmm. Let me see if I can help us answer that. What will kill you more quickly, sleep deprivation or food deprivation? Whoa, sleep deprivation? I'm not here to put down nutrition. I'm here to honor that of our good night's rest. When we talk about deprivation, we think of all or none, and then we think, oh, we're okay, as long as we get some sleep. That would be wrong. We don't know what we don't know. Our society views sleep entirely wrong, and these backward views are killing our productivity, and they're killing us. What I wish for us to appreciate is that we've made it a badge of honor to give up that of our sleep. Staying up to the wee hours of the night and then getting up early is really overdone. It is time for us to change that conversation. What I want us to really get into and to start to thinking about is this. Sleep is a relatively new conversation. And I'm so glad it's here. Early on, doctors, did we think about sleep? We didn't learn about it. It was woo-woo. Doctors were notorious for our crazy hours, first in medical school, then in residency, and often after that. Staying up to the wee hours of the night to finish up some charts and to catch up on our journals is common in the world that I know. I tricked myself into thinking that I was being productive. I thought that by staying up late and skipping out on sleep, that I'd get more done. I was wrong. Boy, was I wrong. Sleep deprivation doesn't make us more productive. It means that we're sleepy during the most important hours of our day. And this has been proven to lead to mistakes. So let me ask, how many mistakes is it OK for doctors to make? <laughs> None. And this accepted lack of sleep is hurting our bodies and it's ruining our health. As a doctor, I've come to learn we're not only physical, we are our thoughts, we have mental health, we feel, we have emotional health, and sleep heals all of these. Wow. I'm going to tell you many things that you know, but I might be also telling you a few new things, an opportunity to look at sleep yet again. What I wish for us to start doing is to take back the night and to really look at sleep in a new way. What if I were to tell you sleep does not just make you healthier and happier, it also finishes your workout. It will clear your negative thoughts, improve your memory, and help you to problem solve. Whoa, it's just sleep. Hmm, maybe a little bit more than that. We have talked about sleep for ages. What do we want to appreciate? It goes back to grandma's medicine. What did grandma say? Come on, you know this. Eat your veggies, go out and play, and, and get your sleep. We have forgotten grandma's wisdom. We have taken an opportunity to think we know more since we're adults. We're wrong, though. What I wish for us to appreciate is that we need to look at this with a new set of eyes. What we want to really do here is to understand that we've all have heard that seven to nine hours of sleep is what we need. Call it eight. But it's not enough just to talk about getting enough sleep. That's not enough. We need to also talk about quality of sleep. All we need to do to understand this is to look at the best sleepers. My friends, let's set the stage. When were we the best sleepers? Babies? No. Teenagers. They're the rock stars of sleep. And don't let anyone tell you any different. You and I were once that teenager, and we slept better back then. So what do teenagers do? They get to sleep. They stay asleep. Have any of you tried to wake up a teenager before they're ready? Should have just left them be. Fussy. They have a special chemistry. We all have had this special chemistry. But as we get older, it becomes a little bit more difficult. We lose out not just on quantity, but also on that of our quality. Here's the awkward thing. 
Some of us don't know because this happens slowly. We get used to it. We suck it up. Some of us don't know how sleepy we are. So let's see if this is the case. My friends, let's take a look at this. More or less, what I want us to do is to really understand sleep. First and foremost, sleep is famously known by what? It's stages. So we go from being awake and then into either light sleep, deep sleep, or that of dreams. Now, light sleep is healthy sleep, but just getting light sleep, we don't feel so great. So we need to get to the stars of the show. We need to talk about deep sleep and dream sleep. That's really going to be the emphasis here. In order to understand this, this is the magic of our teenage sleep. To unveil this magic, to know the secret, we have to look at the first half of the night and then the second half of the night. My friends, what do you and I see more of there in the first half of the night? Deep sleep. What goes on during deep sleep? You and I put out growth hormone and proteins that repair us. This is a billion dollar industry and it's within us every single night. <laughs> Pro athletes are taking sleep to go to the next level. So if you've worked out and you're feeling a few muscles you haven't felt in a while, you and I want to get our sleep. It's gonna finish your workout. This is gonna be doing that of what? Deep sleep is what? Physical repair. So cool. Now, let's look to the second half of the night. What do you see more of in the second half of the night? Dreams. Now, what goes on during dreams? Something really interesting. In your brain, an area called the limbic system. What does that do? It opens up and clears out the negative thoughts and emotions from the day you just lived. Think of it this way. The guy who cut you off, somebody who said something quite rude to you, all negative thought that we just can't let go of? What do people tell us? Ah, come on, dude, get over it, move on. Yeah, right, not so easy. What I want us to really do and to appreciate is that, right, EQ, what? In the 1990s, we started talking about this thing called emotional quotient. Simply put, until we're emotionally clear, we cannot connect to ourselves. Until we connect to ourselves, we cannot connect to others. This is so important for our relationships and in for business and everything in between. In the world that I grew up in and the world that I know, I wasn't encouraged to talk about my emotions. In the hospital, we shied away from this. Who let an emotion loose? Oh, we got pills for that. <laughs> Awkward, slightly true. If you and I don't make time for our emotions, our sleep will. We do emotional clearing. How cool is that? Now, wait, wait, let me not miss something else that's really cool. What else does our deep sleep and our dream sleep do for us? Here it is, memory and problem solving. So imagine yourself already in bed, fast asleep. And the first half of the night, again, that of our deep sleep, here's what the conversation is going on. It's a picture, a panorama of the day you just lived. And you're going to be picking out that of stats, that of numbers, and images that you want to remember. And as if you're taking little post-it notes, you're taking little snapshots and putting it into your brain, this is what we do. We give ourselves an opportunity to work on our memory. Whether you feel that your memory is slipped or not, all of us want to have a robust memory. Now wait, it gets even better. All those little post-it notes, all those little images, Hold on to them, and let's now go to our dream sleep. And now what we're going to do with all these stacks of images and facts, we are going to make connections between them that now were more or less fed to us, spoon-fed to us, connected for us during the day we just lived. And as if we have a file cabinet, remembering all those old thoughts and ideas, we're going to connect the previous with that of the new. So what do we call that when we make connections that were not made for us? We call that problem solving, creativity. Whoa, how cool is that? Do any of us want to give up on this deep sleep? Do any of us want to give up on this dream sleep? This is that physical repair, emotional clearing, that memory work, and problem solving. And again, 
many of us just don't know how sleepy we are. I'm sorry, friends. I'm telling you something that you may believe that you would know. But here we go. Let's just humor ourselves. The following are not normal. It's not normal to fall asleep if reading quietly afternoon. Even if it's a boring book, you should be awake. My friends, it is not normal to nod off watching television in the early evenings. Early. It is not normal to fall asleep on airplanes. And I'm not talking about red-eye flights here. It's not normal to drift off when you're a passenger in a car for an hour without a break. And ready for the zinger? It's not normal to doze off at a stop sign <laughs> or at a red light. That is more common than any of you and I want to know. My friends, it's time. Time to take back that of our night. It's time to take a look at our sleep. It is ours, and it is there to honor us physically, mentally, and everything else in between. What I want us to really appreciate is this. Do we want to give up any of this deep sleep? No. It's repairing our bodies and our minds. It's allowing ourselves to be the best versions of ourselves. So, okay. What are we going to do? What are we going to do as we get older for this deep sleep and this dream sleep? What I really want us to do is appreciate this. Two major conversations. What you and I are about to look at is something that we're already doing. And I want us to take it to the next level. How you eat and more or less move during the daytime is going to help you set up your sleep, and especially that deep sleep. And as you make time for your emotions, for your stress and distress, you are going to be setting up your sleep, and this time your dream sleep. Whoa, how cool is this? Let's look to really understand this rather than just to memorize this. If you and I were to think about deep sleep and only focus on those eight hours in bedtime, We'd be wrong. We'd be missing out. The day before that night is what we need to really appreciate. The 16 hours of daytime sets you up for that eight hours of sleep time. The secret here is energy. The more energy you burn during the daytime sets you up. It gives you the chemistry that puts you to sleep and into your deep sleep. That's the reason why we need to look at how we eat and how we move. Let's talk about what we're putting into our body. My friends, we need to eat real food so we can burn up energy, and that will help us more so than that of eating processed foods. When you and I eat processed foods, we get an energy surge followed by the crash, eating cookies, crackers, cakes, white rice, and all the yummy things in between. will more or less put us on the roller coaster with our energy. You'll burn less energy. That doesn't set you up for sleep. That's not going to give you a deep sleep. We need to eat real food. My friends, eat your fruits, your vegetables, get your protein for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's going to honor you during that night that awaits you. Let's get on to the movement. Simply put, you need to be tired before bed. My friends, move, move, and move. What am I talking about? Here it is. Say you've been active all weekend, helping a friend move, hiking and biking, doing yard work. What do people say? I'm going to sleep good tonight. Some of you love the gym. Some of you get a rash by walking in there. <laughs> you just got to know who you are. It doesn't matter. Again, move, move, and move. Let's get on to that of our dreams. This might be a little bit more work and a little bit more demanding in terms of taking a look at getting your dreams. But then again, it might be easier than that of eating well and moving well. You need to have a bedtime ritual and do it every single night. Remember, your dreams are going to clear out negative thoughts. We ought not give too much to our dreams to do. Sleep science asks us to create a buffer zone. We got to create a separation from the night we just lived and that of the day and night that we just lived and therefore taper into that of our sleep. So, Creating this bedtime ritual, it's really about clearing your thoughts and your mind as best as you can do. For many people, it's doing their to-do list. For others, it's journaling out thoughts and worries. For others, it's creating time and space to work through a problem, to work through a question. You may look to learn meditation, mindfulness. When you pay full attention, full awareness to your breath, it puts you into the present moment. It creates a stillness, 
and a calmness. When you're in the present, you're likely, less likely to be in the past saying shoulda, coulda, less likely to be in the future going what if, what if, what if. What I find so awesomely appreciating to this is that people have said this, right? Oh, that's a good question. I'll sleep on it. I'll dream on it tonight. We've talked about doing this and putting this into that of our lives. Let's make sure that we honor this. If we don't make time to honor our stress and distress, it's going to rear and pop up its ugly head. And that's not what we want to do at all. My friends, this deep sleep and this dream sleep, that physical repair, that emotional clearing on your memories, and also getting that of an opportunity to make those connections. It was asked of me long ago, what should we be doing when you learned all about this on sleep? Again, it's your daytime that sets up that of your night, but your nighttime and that of your day. We've been celebrating the nighttime when we talk about sleep, but I don't hear people talking enough about their daytime. Please, my friends, honor. It's going to make you productive. You're going to get more done. You won't miss those late nights. You are going to be healthier, and you'll feel better too. It was once asked to me, who do you take better care of, you or others? That was quite unsettling for me to think about that. I knew the answer. I knew that I needed to start making myself and my sleep a priority. Us doctors, are we the healthiest people you know? We tend to take care of others before we take care of ourselves. It's with good intentions, but it's also that opportunity to start appreciating what sleep can do for us. My friends, take back the night. We now know what we know. Let's now appreciate that this whole conversation, Grandma, she knew a lot of things. And it's time for us to listen to Grandma yet again. Society has forgotten this. It tends to think and knows better. Please appreciate sleep is not a waste of time. It's just the opposite. We now can take that opportunity. It is this opportunity for us to be our best selves. So in closing, my friends, let's appreciate. Let's more or less get our deep sleep, get our dream sleep. Let's go to sleep, go deep, connect to those of our dreams, honor those opportunities, and keep sleeping. Thank you, and a good night.